A question I've been asked a lot recently is how do I manage my projects if I'm not putting projects into my to-do list or task manager? Well, today I'm going to show you step by step exactly how I manage projects and hopefully it will convince you too that your to-do list or task manager is not the place to manage projects. Now, before we get into this, I should just give you a little brief explanation. I'm not a big believer that everything that is two steps or more is a project. I've never felt comfortable with that. When I did actually do that many years ago now, I discovered that I had 80 projects all managing from my to-do list. It was overwhelming, it was impossible, and my weekly review was taking three to four hours every weekend. I have better things to do in three to four hours on a weekend. So eventually it all came paired when I developed the time sector system, when I realized that actually we don't have that many projects. Most of the things that we think are projects are just us doing our job. We don't need to develop projects. So my rant aside, let me get us started with the first step. First step is to open up your planning book. Now I have my 2025 planning book here and in here I have a project that I am working on right now. This project is the Time Sector System 2025 update. It's the fifth year since this course was first published and it's helped thousands of people all over the world to get a control of what's going on in their lives. Anyway, First step is to plan out on paper. Now the reason for that is simply science. Science backs me up on this because when you plan on paper, you're not distracted by emails, text messages, t Teams messages, Slack messages. You can go to a quiet corner in the office or you can go to your dining room or kitchen table and you can just have your pencil case with a few colored pens a fountain pen if you're in that world like me, and you can just plan out the project in any format you like. There's no template for this. You just let your brain open up. And the science behind this is simply that when you've got something in your hand and you're manipulating your fingers and wrists, you're actually engaging the creative part of your brain. If you don't believe me, go look up the Japanese 2014 study on pen and paper versus digital. It will blow you away and it will get you away from digital technology. But before, this isn't a video about that. But this is where it all starts. I will spend a few days actually with this. I will do some quick writing first and then over a couple of days, I'll come back to it for 20, 30 minutes, add in anything, double check things and just let this grow organically. Get my ideas out on paper first. Okay, so those of you who don't like the paper parts of my video, that's it for paper because this then gets scanned in to my digital tools. Okay, so once everything's scanned into my notes app, now I use Evernote, this is where I will pull out all the important information related to the project. Now, as you can see here, there is some kind of structure involved. At the bottom is the scanned note, the scanned paper note. That's now into the digital system. Now, above that, I go kind of in hierarchical order. The very, very top, I always have the links to the documents I am working on. Now, in this case, I actually have a numbers file with the outline, which I've created. I also have a pages document, which has the workbook that will be created. And I have a keynote file that contains all the slide images that I need in order to build up the course. Now, these are direct links to these documents so that I'm not wasting time trying to find them. Once I'm working on the project, I don't want distractions like, oh, where did I put that keynote? Where did I put that? Oh, oh, where's this? Anything that might be related to the project will be linked at the very top. Now, this works brilliantly if you're collaborating with other people, because if you're in, for example, an online meeting, nobody actually knows that you're clicking on things and opening up documents to check things. And it makes you look incredibly professional. Whoa, this person is organized. 
Underneath that, I actually put in the next actions. Now, this is very important that this is at the top. Again, this is all about minimizing the potential for any distractions. So the next actions are up here. Now, for me, I've been doing online courses now for about eight or nine years, so I know pretty much exactly what needs to happen. Now, these next actions actually work out as a bit of a checklist for me. Now, this one's unique because I, I redesigned the whole slide, so that means I have to re-establish the animations, which is why there's quite a lot of stuff on animations in here. Now, as you can see, as I've been working on the slides, I've created sub tasks, if you like, within this uh, document so that I know what I'm doing as I'm working. Now, the reason I do it this way is traditional task managers, once you've checked a task off, it disappears. So you don't, you can actually find them if you go digging around, but who's got the time for that? What I prefer to do is keep all of that information in the project note because now I have quick access to see what I've done and what I haven't done, so what needs to happen next. This is great if you're collaborating with people and you've got a boss who says, how are you getting on with this? Rather than saying, well, I've still got this to do, this to do, this to do, this to do, you say, I've done this, 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 and this, and this, and I've still got to do this. It just sounds so much better. It sounds like you're actually doing some work, which of course you are. And then underneath that, I've kept a few notes. Now the notes here are just little reminders that I need to keep in mind as I'm working on the project. Now, I'm not collaborating with anyone on this yet, although my video editor will be doing some of the edits on some of the videos, but I haven't handed that over to her yet. So that means at the moment, this is just a project for myself. So as you can see in here, this is how I've structured my project note. Now, because I've got a project note with everything I need to know about this project, all I actually need in my to-do list, or in my case, Todoist, is a task that tells me to work on this project. So work on Time Sector System course update. That's it. I don't need 20, 30, 40 other tasks in there related to the same project. All I need is a single task that tells me to go and work on this project. Now, there are some caveats here. If I need to chase somebody, if I need to follow somebody up and it's the only thing I need to do on a given day, then I'm gonna just put that task into a to-do it. So it might be chase up Christine for the latest images, for example. But it's very rare. Most of the time, I'm quite categorized and structured in when I'm working on projects. I don't want the distraction. Projects are big, juicy things, and it generally needs your full attention. If you're doing little bits here and little bits there, you are task switching, which is exhausting. You don't get much done when that actually happens. Now, the piece de resistance, if you like, is my master projects list. Now, this is kept in my notes app and it has a link to the project note. Now, the project note, simply just click on that. It will open up the document that you just saw, which tells me exactly where I am with the project at any particular time. Now, the great thing about this is everything is now structured and it doesn't take long to set up. Remember, it starts with pen and paper. That takes a couple of days because you want it to mature, to, to percolate, if you like, get the ideas out. Then it will go into the, into the Notes app by scanning it. Just scan, take a picture of it, scan it. Most Notes apps have a built-in scanning with your phone now. And then you can pull out the main bits and the next steps. Now, there are some other things that you may want to keep in there. For example, when I was writing Your Time, Your Way, I was having weekly meetings with my publisher. So there was also a meeting note. So that means that the, the project, the book project itself, became a notebook. Now, bigger projects I generally do create notebooks for, particularly collaboration projects, because there's going to be meeting notes. There's going to be emails back and forth. There's probably going to be reference material. So I want to keep all that in a notebook. For some most projects, though, I only need a single note structured as you see. So the documents are at the top, then the next actions, and then any notes that I want and the original planning note. And that's it. 
Everything then is just all I need to do is make sure on my calendar that each week I've got time protected to work on the project. After all, if you don't have time to work on the project, it will never get done. You have the responsibility to make sure you have the time to make to do and work on that project. And that's essentially where the calendar comes in. Now for me, usually Tuesdays are my project days, but sometimes I can fill in on a Thursday uh, usually I've got a lot of meetings on Thursday, but I often can find an hour or two on a Thursday. And if the worst case scenario comes, I've got my emergency time, which is 10 p.m. till midnight, which I very rarely need to use. But if I ever do, it's there. It's waiting for me. And that's it. That's how I bring all my projects together. It's how I manage my projects. It prevents overwhelm from happening, basically, because rather than having 20, 30 tasks related to one project sitting in my task manager, I only have a single task which tells me that I need to work on a given project. And when it comes to reviewing, which is, by the way, separate from planning, all I need to do is go to my master projects list and say which of these projects need my attention next week. And that's it. Very simple, very easy to use, and you can, you can basically create whatever you want in your notes app. Now, people have asked me, can you, do you have a template for your projects? The problem here is every project's different. This is an online course update, but I also have a project for redesigning the terrace, the up, upstairs terrace. That's a totally different kind of project. There's no actual documents involved in there, but there are quite a few sketches on paper. There's uh, inspirational ideas, pictures, images that I've got, which I've saved into Evernote. These kind of things you know, are just in there. So, it's not, there's no template. Now you by all means can create templates for your projects if you wish, but generally speaking, you probably don't want to be doing that because as I say, every project's going to be unique, every project's going to be different. So, you know, you, you're going to get yourself tied up in knots if you're trying to limit yourself to a specific type of template. So there you go. Now, if you want to learn more about how I plan out the projects, last year I did do a video on that and you can see that up here.